How is your supermarket protecting you from giardiasis? I'm Mark Davis. Tom Clark will tell us how much snow we'll get. And Joe Zone has all the scores next on Newswatch 16 Update. The Winter Olympic Games promise to be another celebration of courage, determination, and skill. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Beginning Monday, February 6th, ABC Sports and WNEP 16 will bring you 64 hours of action-packed exclusive coverage from Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. And to keep you on top of all the action and excitement, sports reporter Joe Zone will bring you the latest sports news on Newswatch 16 Update at 11. Live the drama of the Olympic Games only on ABC Sports and WNEP 16. Rebuilding the Region, Sunday. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. The state has started an investigation into the Pennsylvania Gas and Water Company. The Public Utility Commission announced in Harrisburg today that it's beginning the probe of PG&W because of the outbreak of giardiasis in our area. The PUC will try to decide whether customers who've been getting the contaminated water from PG&W should be given reduced rates or refunds and whether PG&W should be fined. The contaminated drinking water has led to a total of 227 cases of the chronic intestinal flu-like sickness in Lackawanna and Luzerne counties. Because of the giardiasis outbreak, more and more free, clean drinking water is being made available to PG&W customers in the affected areas. The Paps Brewery in New Jersey has donated hundreds of cans of free drinking water, and the cans are being distributed by the Wyoming Quality Beverage in West Wyoming. The contaminated water is causing all kinds of inconveniences and in some places that you would not normally think of. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis tells us how one supermarket in the water warning area is coping with the geodiasis threat. You may not think of it immediately, but water is a big part of the produce department of any supermarket. At this Kingston store, to cut down on the risk of geodiasis, spring water was being used to wash down the vegetables, but that got too expensive. Now, this filter system has been installed. It involves a one micron filter bag, which should be good enough to trap GRD assists. But the people here are going one step further. Come Monday, after we feel like enough gallons uh, went through this uh, filter, we're going to get it analyzed someplace in Philadelphia. Uh, as a matter of fact, the company itself uh, will come up here and pull the bag out and then check it out and analyze it to see if the bug was caught in this filtered bag. George Scuzo is so confident this system works, he had a similar one installed in his 40-fort home. But even though the water here is filtered, customers are still being reminded to wash the produce at home with clean water. We only take off the sand and some of the dirt when we wash them here. For good cleansing, they should do it again at home. State inspectors are now visiting each and every supermarket in the geodiasis affected area. Now, while they say they can't recommend any water filters, they are happy with the one put in here. As for some of the smaller stores who may not be able to afford a water filter, they say for them they should still use safe spring water or at least boiled water to clean their vegetables and machines. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Kingston. Work to plug up a gas leak in Scranton should begin in the morning. So far, fire officials say they found one leak at a tank at the Amoco station on Music Street. But tonight, crews were still checking to see if there are any leaks at the nearby Texaco station. Another gas station in the area has been cleared of any possible leaks. Dangerous gas fumes forced a bank and a bar to close and a home to be evacuated. If this Texaco station gets a clean bill of health, crews will begin fixing the gas leak problem at the Amoco station. Still ahead, California's answer to the Health Watch. But also, we have meteorologist Tom Clark, who will be heading out to the backyard to give us his version of the, <laughs> the mood and reflex yeah. index, uh, plus also tomorrow's mm -hmm. forecast. You're thinking and everything else. <laughs> the latest on the weekend weather picture is coming up from the backyard, and I'm going to head out there now uh, in the snow. You can join me. Hey, Joe!
Although Martin Luther King Day doesn't become an official national holiday until 1985, the civil rights leader's birthday was marked in Scranton today. Some 50 people marched through part of Scranton and ended at City Hall, where the group gathered to sing hymns and read from the Bible. King was assassinated back in 1968. Monday is the day Martin Luther King's birthday will be celebrated. Let's go out to that backyard right now. Yeah. Tom does not have a hat on, so it hey, can't, be, all right. can't be too bad out there, can no, it, not, not too bad, Nolan, mm -hmm. but no one join, you didn't come out and join me. No, <laughs> we'll <laughs> no stay <way>. inside. <laughs> hey, we've had a little bit of fluffy snow here in the past uh, few hours. Just about, oh, a quarter inch has accumulated, and it's still coming down very, very lightly. Let's roll the video and see if we can pick up some of that snow coming down in the lights up at the... Uh, airport, the Wilkesbury scranton Airport, and uh, just like I said before, snowing very lightly outside now. The sky is cloudy and the temperature is holding in the 20s in most places. There it is there, the tower and the light. You can see the snow coming down there. The elevation of that airport, about 930 feet above sea level. Now let's go down the numbers as they stand. The reading now in the backyard is 25 degrees. The humidity is 88 percent, very high. The wind is light. The barometer is still quite high, but it continues to fall. The range in temperature, 25 on the top side today. Well, seven degrees below the normal high for this date of 32. That low this morning, seven above zero. The record, 69, and it was a cold morning back on this date in 1981. Let's have a look at the view from 22,000 miles in space. A lot of clouds over the eastern seaboard. Temperatures near 80 this afternoon down there in Miami. You can see some of the sun down that way. But uh, still some light snow falling throughout the area. A break in the clouds to the west. Sub-zero temperatures tonight uh, coming down from Canada. And it looks like another surge of very cold air entering the nation for this weekend once again. We'll see some of these breaks here tomorrow night as the moon comes out in all its glory. Now, here's some storms uh, out here in the west, uh, a storm forming out that way. A lot of snow, you can see the clouds, and I think that storm will play a part in our weather, bringing us our next real threat of snow here by the middle part of next week. The nowcast on the computer shows there's the center of low pressure, a weak little storm causing this area of snow uh, to fall uh, from Michigan out across Pennsylvania. But the snow out this way, very, very light. And as this storm tracks up across Lake Erie into New York State, it'll be taking the snow with it. And look at this, a band of freezing rain and ice from Baltimore all the way down to uh, central North Carolina. We won't see any ice here, just some slippery spots from this light snow area. Then the wind will shift into the northwest tomorrow to begin that fresh outbreak of cold air behind this storm system. Here's the forecast for the balance of the night. Uh, a few more hours of light snow, accumulations of under an inch, but just enough to make some of the roads slick and slippery. The low in Tompkinsville tomorrow morning in Lackawanna County, 23 degrees. How about 24 in Glen Lyon? Not too far from here. 23 down there in Northumberland County, Elysburg, and about 23 the low in Williamsport. Now tomorrow, various shades of gray overhead. There'll be some snow flurries, and a cold breeze will pick up late in the day, 15 miles per hour from the northwest. How about Rummerfield up there in Bradford County? Your high tomorrow, 29. West Pittston. Hello out there, 31 your high, 32 in Bloomsburg, 32 in Palmerton, and about 29 in Jersey Shore. The health watch on a Saturday looks like this. Reflex is quite high because of the barometer staying pretty high. And a clearing trend late in the day should help things. How about that mood? Well, about average. The snow tonight, the flurries tomorrow, brilliant on Sunday. Lots of sunshine and blue sky, but colder, about 10 degrees colder on Sunday than tomorrow, 21 the high, and I think some snow could come in uh, by Tuesday of next week. So, a reinforcing shot of cold air tomorrow night and Sunday. Keep warm this weekend, guys. Okay. All right, you have a good one. Coming up, how to cut down on being uptight. Plus, lots of scores. In fact, all the high school scores, including the Super 16 game of the week, uh, of the night, we should say, Joe's own, with our 16 sports. This is the moment. Brides, don't forget to register for WNEP's Big Bridal Fair. Time's running out for the most extravagant bridal fair around. Time for Bridal Fair. Register for your free invitation at Wyoming Homes or Gus Gennetti's Best Western Motor Inn. 
A lot of basketball tonight, Joe. I bet we have it all, right? Yeah, Friday night is usually a big night for basketball. And right off the top, the game of the night, as far as we're concerned here, for the Super 16 in the sports screen, let's take a look at it. The big one tonight was in Weatherly, where our ninth-ranked Weatherly Wreckers took on 12th-ranked Tamaqua. Tim Carlson was there. He's got the story. Second quarter action in the score tight. Chris Minnick off the glass for the white shirt at Weatherly Wreckers. Now back down the Blue Raiders. Mike Plasco to Howie Miller and all cords for two there. The Wreckers now. It's Colin Mondero to Tom Figus. Two of his 16 from the wing. And 17 points tonight for Mike Plasco. Two of them right here. And then the Raiders top scorer with 20 points tonight. Ed Titus. Watch him lay it in for an easy two. Tamakwa led by only three and a half but went on to win by a 71-59 score over the Weatherly Wreckers. Tim Carlson, Newswatch 16 Sports in Weatherly. Now to the scoreboard. School Kill League number 12, Tamaqua beat Weatherly. Pottsville, our number three team, won their game tonight. Elsewhere, School Kill Haven and Mount Carmel winners. North School Kill and number eight, Lords Regional, won their games. Pine Grove and Freeland in the School Kill League. Still more School Kill. Marion and West Hazelton came up winners. Bishop Hafey and Jim Thorpe. Now, Tri-Valley League, Upper Dauphin and West Snyder. Mid-Pen League, number 10, Millville. They keep right arm rolling over Montgomery. Northern Tier East, Athens and Troy. Northern Tier East, Waverly and number 15, Northeast Bradford. Northern Tier East, Sullivan over Wyalusing. In the West, Mansfield over Kowaneski Valley, Oakland beat Liberty. Number 14, Galton and North Penn won. Colonial League, Palisades and Salisbury. Saucon Valley and Penn Argyll won their games. Okay, at Bishop O'Hara tonight, the Bruins home with Lakeland in a Lackawanna North game. And let's go to the highlights of that one. Joe Reno to Romeo Natale. He hits the long jumper from outside. Chiefs, number 43, Mike Dean in the corner, steps out, nails it off the glass. Now watch Palevich cross court to Natale. He drives, he hits the layup right there. Number 21 for Lakeland, Mike Maticek to number 25, Brian Schweppenhauser. He hits, and O'Hara goes on to win it. Let's go to the scoreboard again now. Prep, our number four team over Bishop Hannon tonight. They're still undefeated. Number seven, Tech just got by North Pocono. Central and number six, Abington Heights as they continue to roll. Honesdale knocked off Valley View. Carbondale beat Riverside. The North Bishop O'Hara by a point over Lakeland. Old Forge beat Mid Valley. Elk Lake and Montrose in the NAC. Blue Ridge and Mountain View also in the NAC. Wyoming Valley Division I, Hazleton beat Tunkhannock by 10. Dallas over GAR in Division II. East Penn Conference, Allentown Central Catholic a loser. Allentown Deer have won its game. Emmaus and Parkland winners. And Whitehall over Bethlehem Liberty. Central State, Bishop Newman, Bald Eagle area. West Branch, Bald Eagle Nittany, number 16, Loyal Sock won. Mifflinburg and Lewisburg winners. Keystone Big Nine, number two, Northwest, they won, and so did Danville. Shimokin and Sealands Grove. High School Basketball, Williamsport, they remain undefeated, our number one team, and Central Columbia. Bethlehem Freedom and Notre Dame, East Stroudsburg. Delaware Valley and Nazareth. As we wrap up, the high school basketball. Okay, a couple of big ones in the NBA tonight. The Sixers and the Boston Celtics. Take a look at it right here. Who else? Dr. J. Bang! Irving there as the Sixers went up by seven. And now, Tony to Irving. And he'll take it again the easy way. Two more. But this one is going to be the Sixers and Celtics battling it out. Uh, Sixers led for a long time. But then Bird right here. He had 29 points. The Celtics win this one by a single point. Okay, on the scoreboard, take a look at it. Nothing from the Knicks Milwaukee yet, but Boston over Milwaukee, 105 to 104. Elsewhere, Golden State knocked off New Jersey. Detroit took care of Chicago. Atlanta over Indiana, 117 to 108. That's the NBA. College basketball, Kentucky, number two team upset by Auburn. Now, college wrestling, Bloomsburg beat Slippery Rock 42-3. Even some swimming, the Central boys and girls won their matches today. Now, let's take a look at the ski report and see what it looks like. Big Boulder Lake, Harmony, 10 slopes, 4 lifts, 28 to 40 inch base. Camelback, 22 slopes, 8 lifts, 20 to 40 inch base. Elk Mountain, 17 slopes, 5 lifts, 25 to 52 inch base. Jack Frost, Whitehaven, 18 slopes, 7 lifts, 36 to 54 inch base. Shawnee, 16 slopes, 4 lifts, 25 to 45 inch base. Tanglewood, Lake Wall and Paw Pack, 7 slopes, three lifts, 20 to 50 inch base. Mount Tone, Lake Como, nine slopes, four lifts, 20 to 40 inch base. 
Cussie Mountain State College, four slopes, two lifts, 12 to 48 inch base. No fish, because no fish. we're out of time all again. Right. I'm sorry, fishers. Oh, you are right. jam-packed. That's the way it happens. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Monday. Joe. We may get a charge out of when we come back. Finally tonight, for those of you who get uptight, who let stress and strain get you down. We've got the very latest, it's sure to be the greatest, stress-reducing gimmick in town. Reporter Gene Gleason gives us all good reason to carry a little white card. Stress is the body's reaction to pressure and seems to be a permanent fixture of modern life. People gulp pills, sit in hot tubs, drink great quantities of liquor just to get rid of their stress. Now a clinical psychologist says he's developed an easier way, a stress control card. Stick your finger onto the card, count to 10 slowly, and a color code tells you just how stressed out you really are. And the idea is that you test yourself first, see what level you're at to begin with. And if you're stressed, then you go through one of the relaxation techniques and then you retest yourself with the card and you see the actual change and that change is what reinforces you and encourages you to continue practicing the techniques. Barrios is marketing the stress cards in bookstores and supermarkets around the Southland and they become something of a novelty item. People try to wish their stress levels back off the pressurized black portion of the card to the more relaxed blue. Huh? He's blue. Calm. You're as calm. See? Oh, green right here. Calm. You're, you're blue, calm. I'm the one that <laughs> suffers the stress. Oh, that's green. If you're not that lucky or laid back, the back of the card features four suggestions on how you can reduce your stress level. They include clenching fists and deep breathing to thinking about something pleasurable, like sitting in a hot tub. Gene Gleason for ABC News. I'll see? go with the hot tub. Okay, see, what do you think of that? Yeah, anyway, yeah. you're the stressful. <laughs> That's our report for tonight. Nightline is next for the team. Thanks for being with us. Enjoy your weekend. Good weekend. <laughs>